you see our next back, uh, back on stage where she belongs. You can catch her in the musical Mame at the Paper Mill Playhouse. Welcome back to the show, my good friend, Christine Ebersole. <laughs> I don't know. It's, well, not one of your kids. Did you bring your kids today? I didn't bring my kids no. today, Rosie. Re Elijah's in school today. Right. So, Rosie, you know, we left Hollywood for New Jersey. I know. I'm so excited know, about very that. very excited. We Christine left... actually stayed in my house the entire summer. I did. I stayed in Ro your house the entire summer. I saw your house. I didn't see you. Right. Yeah. Right. Which was such a big pleasure. But, get... <laughs> no, not, not, not seeing Rosie, yeah. but I mean, living in our house, let me tell you, it's like living at the Ritz, but... Um, <laughs> so you, you had a big move, though. It was tough yeah, for you. Yeah, you know, it was, ten, it was 10 years living in this house in Studio City, California, and I'm not kidding you. We were just literally one step ahead of the movers every single step of the way. They didn't get out of there till 11 o'clock at night that night. We didn't get to sleep till probably 4. We had to get up at 5 because we had to move four dogs, three cats, three kids, uh, one husband, and no help uh, across the country on an 8 o'clock flight. And uh, so I overslept. We overslept because uh, that one hour just wasn't enough. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and we were staying across the street at, at, at the house across the street. And the driver who came at like 6 in the morning was knocking on the house that we just moved out of. And luckily, um, our neighbor, Thomas Calabro from Melrose Place, he was on his way to golf, thank God. So he, um, <laughs> so he knocked on the door. He said, hey, listen, they're waiting for you across the street. So... We, we went and got the four dogs, we got the three cats, we, we got the kids, just loaded them up in the car. We were a little bit late because, uh, you know, like I said, we woke up late. We got to the airport, we had, you know, a little bit, you know, had some time. We got two dogs and two cats we were going to put in the hold. And uh, Chi Chi and Coco, you know, they were the little dogs, we were going to take them on the plane with us. And Puss, who is 17, who just had surgery. You know, she's only got one eye now, Rosie. Yeah, she's like, I know. She's one-eyed Puss now. You she can't remember it. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she was going to come on the plane with us. So everything was going fine. We were going to get there. It was all going to happen ex until we got to the metal detectors. And they said, uh, they just looked at me and they said, uh, you got to take the cat out of the bag. I said, I can't take the cat out of the bag. She's, you know, she's got one eye. She can't hear. She's going to freak out. She's 17 years old. Well, all of a sudden, you know, I'm carrying concealed weapons, you know. Right. So <laughs> they, they get everybody, you know, they get everybody around, and they had to take the, the cat out of the bag. I had to take the dogs out of the bag, and Bill's got the three kids. And, and meanwhile, I didn't tell you that I had surgery. I had my bunions corrected, like, it's like three weeks before that. So my feet were just out of a cast. So it, it is a little bit like the out-of-towners meets, you know, trains, planes, and automobiles. So... Anyway, so we, we finally get through the metal detectors. We're running right to the gate. It's United Airlines, and they're, they're known for leaving on time. So, uh, you know, it's about 10 minutes to 8, and the plane's going to leave at 8 o'clock. So we get there. We got the three kids. We got the three cat, the animals, and then Bill's there, and I'm there, and I said, Bill, where's the tickets? He says, it's in the straw bag. I said, where's the straw bag? It's back to the metal detectors. <gasps> so Bill runs back to the metal detectors, and I'm thinking, oh, God, there's about three more bags that we forgot that we left there because just in the hurry, you know, of trying to get everything out. So Bill runs back there. So he comes back, then I sprint back, you know, with my brand new feet, and uh, <laughs> it's about a quarter of a mile. And I get back there, and I get the two bags, and meanwhile, there's like two minutes now. So we get back to the airplane, and uh, Bill's like, where's Aaron? Aaron's missing! He's missing in the airport! That's the baby. That's the baby, yeah. Uh -huh. So Aaron's missing, and then he sent Elijah out to look for Aaron. And so and now they're two missing, you know? And meanwhile, it's two minutes. <laughs> so finally we get the, the kids, we get the air, and it's literally, Rosie, one of those slow motion things where you see you're running towards the gate, and you see there's two people in front of you that are happily giving their tickets to the lady. She nods and sends them on their way, and as soon as we get there, boom, the door slams. Oh. I said... You gotta let us on the plane. We've got dark dogs and the cats are on the plane and all our luggage is on it. You've gotta let us on. She just looked at me and said, Well, you should have been on time. <laughs> if she only knew. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna make Chris sing because she has an amazing voice. She's doing name at the Painter Mill Playhouse. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Before my best girl from the musical Name are Christine Ebersol and you know him from this show, Cutie Patootie. Paul Iacono. Let's hear it. You're my best girl and nothing you do is wrong. I'm proud you belong to me. And if I 
Another bow comes along, determined to take your place. I hope he's resigned to falling behind my best boy. and Paulie Iacono. You might remember Paul. He had his big break on this show, didn't you, Paul? Yes. Tell everybody how you uh, got discovered. Well, Joey Kohler, the great warm-up guy, brought me out, and um, he brought me down here. He goes, Rosie, you got to see this kid. He sings Frank Sinatra. And I came on, I sang my song, and here I am now for my sixth time on Rosie. There you go. And, Paulie, shortly after your first time on the show, you were diagnosed with leukemia, right? Yes. So since then, and now, you've had how many treatments for uh, cancer? Uh, 130 weeks. 130 weeks of chemo, and right now you're better. Right. Let's give a round of applause. For and is it true that you didn't even miss rehearsal? You had chemo and you still went to work? No, I went all the rehearsals and I made everything. I'm doing the show now. I'm fine. And you're speaking, you're doing lectures about leukemia all over the country? Yes, I am the national spokesperson for the Leukemia Society. So that means that they, the Leukemia Society sends me around uh, the United States going to different, uh, different things to talk about leukemia and how good it is to join the society and raise money for them. I'm so proud of you, Paulie. Go see them. Auntie May at the paper.